the platform is equal parts fundraising tool and storytelling awareness building. There is a lot that you guys are putting on the site and you're sharing through your own promotional efforts that's building awareness of the projects that you're working on and the things that you're developing and the things that you're, you're, how you're impacting the community. One of the things that I get asked a lot when I'm talking in other communities in um, talking about Power to Give is what are the lessons that we have learned um, as we've you know, been on the site for 20 months. And so just quickly, I wanna run through um, you know, the, the ones that kind of stand out to me. And the first one is that this digital fundraising is somewhat new, right? And so that's why we've got the workshop, that's why we've got the great speakers um, here today to share with you is that, you know, we've all done lots of major gift fundraising, grant fundraising, some of us have done big black tie events, you know, different types of fundraising. But this crowdfunding, this digital fundraising of telling the story, titling it well, sharing it through social media, it's a little bit different from some of our traditional fundraising. And so it's something that we have to, you know, spend a little bit of extra time thinking about and working with. And so that's one of the things that, you know, we're committed to doing is sharing those tips and those ideas and those lessons learned around um, how to become better and stronger digital fundraisers. And so that's one of our lessons learned. Uh, the second one is, that, is this complete correlation between project funding and project promotion, right? And so, you know, I joke, but, you know, post it and they will come is not a marketing strategy. Um, it just doesn't happen that way. While we have a lot of cross traffic and we know that 45% of the donors in Charlotte are new and some of them got to your projects because they were looking at someone else's project and then found yours, which is great. Um, but you gotta tell the story, right? You gotta share the message of your project. You've gotta promote your project. The more you tell people and the more everybody else is telling folks, the more activity that'll drive to the site, the more opportunity someone will have to see your project, whether it was something that you initiated the promotion on or somebody else. And so, you know, there, there's a lot of crowdfunding platforms out there right now. I mean, tons, hundreds. I saw some report a couple of weeks ago that said there were 450 different crowdfunding sites out there. So there's a lot of sites. All right, the, one of the things that differentiates Power to Give is that we're doing it as a community, right? And so we've got the opportunity to cross promote our projects. And so when we're driving people to any one project, we're hopefully exposing them and driving them to all projects. And so that's how some of the people are getting to your projects is that they're viewing someone else's and then coming to yours. And so that cross promotion is important. And project ambassadors um, make most creative marketers, right? So this goes back to the comment I was making um, right before the break, is that I think a project ambassador is somebody who is personally vested in wanting to see that project succeed. Not the funding piece of it necessarily, but the project itself, it's, right? It's the curator that wants to see that activity absolutely happen. It's that longtime volunteer that has always wanted to see X, Y, Z happen in, in the summer months. It's that person that cares about that project. That's your project ambassador. They may not be the person that writes the narrative, and they may not be the person that's responsible for posting things on Facebook. The project ambassador could be, like I said, a volunteer. It could be a curator. It could be the receptionist. It's somebody that cares about this project, and you want to make sure that you give them a voice in how to promote the project. Right? Ask them how, how do they want to promote it? Who do they want to tell about it? You know, if it's about building sets for um, an upcoming show, you know, a project ambassador is going to be the one that comes up with the idea that, you know, for Father's Day weekend, we should talk to the Ace Hardware and see if we could put um, statements about our project and buying lumber for the set for the show and all the people that check out from the Ace Hardware. Well, okay, so that's a different idea. It's create, you know, so where we see some of the best ideas are from the project ambassadors, the ones that really want to see those projects get done. So I encourage you to find out within your organization, your sphere of influence, your, your circle of volunteers, who's your project ambassador for each project? Who's that person that personally wants to come up with different ways to promote the project? Make sense? Uh, and then we already talked about the, the new postings. If, if you are not experiencing this level of new donors to your projects, I'd encourage you to challenge yourself on why and how are you telling your story and how could you be telling it differently in order to increase your exposure to new donors. I think it's great for all of our existing donors to be you know, giving to projects and, and hopefully upselling and, and increasing their giving. We've seen plenty of, of significant donors that support your operations and then they also support projects with some gifts and when it comes time to renew their, their operating gift, they don't lower their gift and so that's great. This is a way to, to have 
um, upselling and additive fundraising from your longtime supporters, but it's also a great tool for introductory invitations to new donors. And if you're not seeing that, then you know, make sure that you're thinking about how you can increase your exposure to new donors. Brainstorm with Perry, talk to me, and you'll hear some more after this afternoon about how to get in front of new audiences. Um, yes? So uh, we have posted one project, and when we generated the report, it seemed like there was a column there where it indicated if the donor wanted to be a, uh, approached by us or not. So I have not personally made a donation to power to give, so obviously there's a place on there that they can indicate yes or no, they want to hear back from us a little bit. Can you put a little bit on that? Yep. So the question is around um, when when someone is making a gift on Power to Give, one of the things that that they can opt into or out of is um, you know receiving additional information um, about Power to Give and, and and your activities. You all have the ability to contact those donors to honor all of the donor benefits and to share with them the project updates and things like that. If they have asked to not be contacted though with any f further information, I would not resolicit them. Um, I would absolutely thank them. Yep, yep. So in the spirit of it, we need to thank them for their gift, acknowledge their gift, honor their donor benefit, um, but probably not resolicit them on, on, on something else based on the way that they signed up on the, on the site. So to honor, honor that opt-in, opt-out. All right. We are trying to, and Melissa is going to help us with this, we are trying to increase some of our social media activity ourselves. And so we enjoy the opportunity to share your postings with the Power to Give Network. We also enjoy retweeting when you tweet about projects. So if you are not already following us on Twitter and including Power to Give in your tweets, and if you are not uh, tagging Power to Give in your postings, we can't help you promote, right? We can't retweet and we can't share your activity if we don't know that it's going on. So um, if, if you can make sure that you are um, have um, you know, liked us on, on the Facebook and have, um, are following us on Twitter, then we can retweet and we can share your postings, um, that kind of thing. So if you have not already done this, I ask you to consider doing this when you get back, or if you are not in charge of your social media activity yourself, if you would make a note and take this back to the folks in your office, um, that would be great, um, because we really do enjoy retweeting and um, sharing the activity that you're doing when we know about it. All right, the last thing I'm going to cover um, is a couple of quick announcements. We were trying to get as much information available for you as possible. Um, and so since you are here, you get the, this is the first of these announcements that's being made publicly. So the first is, I said on the back of the brochure, you saw the, the, the donors that have, the corporate donors that have been strong supporters of Power to Give and providing matching grants, which is, has been tremendous. Uh, Wells Fargo and uh, the Knight Foundation and the Levine Le Foundation, so all great activity. So we are continuing, the Arts and Science Council is committed to trying to continue to keep that pipeline of matching grants flowing. Um, we also know that it isn't required that there always be matching grants. We've seen a lot of gifts that come through um, for projects that are not matched. Um, and so, you know, it's not only when there's matching grants, we know that's a high energy piece of it, but, um, and so a couple of things that are going on. The first is, um, some of you that put, may have posted projects last summer, remember the Levine Foundation gave us a grant for arts education, cultural education activities, not just arts, but cultural education. Uh, they are renewing their grant. It'll be at a different level. It's a different dollar amount um, and some different specifications. So we're working with them right now. Um, so this is early information, um, but they, they are coming in with a commitment and we will be sharing in July um, the, the guidelines for the cultural education grant from the Levine Foundation. So more news to come forward on that, uh, but we're very excited about that. Uh, the second is um, there is another, um, we just uh, completed a grant um, from Wells Fargo for operating grant recipients. Um, there was interest in, in, um, in a similar grant, and so we're working out the details on that. And so in mid-July, I will also get more information out to you on that, but there's likely for operating grant uh, recipients an opportunity for additional matching funds that way. Uh, we are also, um, and this one didn't, this one's brand new information, so it didn't even make it on the slide. I just got an email this morning uh, that it looks like we may have a, uh, a corporate supporter in town that wants to support STEM projects on the site. So be thinking about if there's something that you do within your organization that meets um, STEM criteria, 
uh, we'll be sending in information out about that as well. Uh, and then the last one is um, we've seen in different communities more than in Charlotte, we've seen individual organizations kind of bring in forward their own challenges. And so I just want to make sure that, that you be thinking about how that may work for your organization. And what we can do is, um, you know, there's questions about fees and things like that if you bring your own challenge. And so Perry and I will work with you on that. And we'll probably waive fees as, it, you know, if you have a board member who says, look, I love this project and I want to see this project happen and I'll put up the money as the match specifically for your project or specifically for something for your organization, we'll work with you on how to do that. We know the match is an incentive to donors. And so if you want to bring your own matches to the table, we'll help enable that and work with you on um, uh, reducing the fees as it relates to the, the match component. All right, so I just want to plant that seed out there that, that you know, the, the match does have some enthusiasm that brings some energy. And so if you want to bring your own to your own projects, we'll help you make that happen. Any questions on the matches? We think this is all good information. I hope this feels like good information as we start going into the, the next billion of fundraising uh, and uh, actually as we kick off the new fiscal year.